Speaking of the overseas markets, an absolutely stellar result when it did come to Japan. You saw your sales there up by 25, your EBITDA up by almost 30, opening 75 odd new stores. And do I take it correct that that potentially could be your biggest market long term as well, beating out Australia? Yeah, the, the way I, we, we have a lot of fun internally and we bet on this, but there's no question Japan in the near term being this, this decade will be um, become the biggest business. I'm a, I'm, I believe that uh, Germany and France will be runners in the long term because of the, the, they're still large, I mean, populations are smaller, but large pizza markets, you know. Uh, Germany's the fifth biggest pizza market in the world, France the third biggest pizza market or second biggest pizza market, depending on how you measure it versus Italy. Um, so, you know, I think they're going to be in the longer term, the, the real big ones. But yeah, Japan, we, we upgraded today that we now see it as a 1500 store market. We used to see it as a thousand store market. Um, but yeah, my 33 and a half years in this business, the same store sales and growth that we saw in Japan during this period were the biggest numbers I've ever seen in my history. And and partly, um, there was no question we had a tailwind from the restaurants that were closed and with our zero contact processes, people felt safe to get a delivery, but carry out was still really strong. Both, out of all of the countries, Japan was the least locked down for our model. So we saw strong carry out and delivery growth with our zero contact processes. Um, and then the team used this moment to really leverage some of the things that we'd be building pre-COVID. Um, you know, the digital platforms, our pricing, we launched a 50% off carryout uh, model in Japan, which has been very successful. Um, and so, yeah, I think the team has been bold and brave and, and making really good customer and team member decisions.